Now I've got an interesting pattern for you today. This is the first time I've tied this or anything like it, but I think you're gonna like it. Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So I was flipping through Stuart and Allen's Flies for Bass and Panfish, looking for a nice big warm water bait fish pattern, and I came across one called the Bristleback. Now this fly was created by Tom Lentz of Florida, who says he got the inspiration for it from a West Coast saltwater pattern. Now it's a big, bright, attractor bait fish pattern. So you know it's gonna work for big warm water bass, but there's no reason this thing wouldn't work for big trout as well. Now it's not a difficult tie, but it does have one technique that I'd never done before. And it's basically using a couple of hackle feathers for, I wouldn't call it a wing, but it's more of a dorsal fin for the, the bait fish pattern. And it's almost tied Matuka style, but it's not. So you'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. But it's a pretty cool pattern and it was fun to tie. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, a bristle back. It's a pretty nifty looking pattern with that almost Matuka style looking wing. And I would say the best sizes for this are pretty much whatever you tie your bait fish streamers on. I'm gonna go in a size six, it's a 4X long. It's a silver hook, I just pinched the barb down right there. Let's get this in here straight. Okay, I think that'll work. And I am gonna weight it. The recipe does call for some weight and I would think I would wanna fish this thing kinda of deep anyway. So I'm gonna weigh maybe two thirds of the, the shank here. So what am I gonna use for the thread? That's right, I'm getting crazy. I'm gonna go with the blue. I'm just trying to match this to what I'm gonna put that the dorsal fin and tail. It really doesn't matter because there are no fish out there with this color scheme. It's pretty much an attractor bait fish pattern. So if all you have is black thread, yeah, that's gonna be perfectly fine. But I will try to put a little ramp at the front of this weight, and then again at the back. Okay, that's close enough. Let's take our thread to the back and then catch in our first two components. The first one I'm gonna catch in is a small black chenille. I wouldn't try to use a medium on this, now, this is really gonna be our, our lateral line for the fish. So I took a piece, I don't know, maybe three inches long, maybe a little bit more, not much more. And I'm just gonna catch it in right there. I'm not even worried about um, stripping off the tip because it's a, gonna be a big buggy, a fuzzy body with this white chenille here in just a second anyway. Okay, so I think that's gonna be fine. And since this is kind of a loop, I'm gonna go ahead and just snip it off. Now I've got my two pieces off to the side. And for the body, I am gonna use a white chenille. And I am using a medium on this. If you had small, uh, you could make it work. But I want the body to be just a little bit fatter. So I'll go ahead and catch this in right here. I did strip off a little bit of that one, but probably wasn't all that vital. So let's catch this in all the way back to where we want the back of our body to be. Try to keep these out of the way for just a second here. Okay. Now, leave your thread back here to where you want the, the back of the body to be. We're gonna want a little separation between the dorsal fin and the tail. And what we use here is just cheap hackle feathers. You know, big chicken here. Big blue chicken, I think this is kingfisher blue. Taking two of these feathers right here, and I'm going to um, just kind of lay them on there until you measure the top. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. And I will pinch it right here where the back I want it to be, and then go ahead and pull the underside of the fibers off. Okay, now when you've done that, so it kind of looks like a little matuka there, this might be the, the part you wanna take your time on. Where your thread is hanging, that's where we want our gap to be. So just pull these up right here. You probably put your bodkin in there if you want, but I'm not gonna be that precise. I will just pull it back with my fingers and then put a couple of thread wraps in here to try to get this separation. Now we're gonna separate it a little bit more in just a minute, but you know, a couple thread wraps at, at the start Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. Let's keep it on top. 
Now I'm going to put a couple of tight wraps on it. Okay. And I've been wrapping my first wrap of this white chenille in between that. And it, I think it helps. It gives us a definite separation. So go ahead and lift these up and take your thread back up to the front. And now we're going to wrap this white. So be a little bit careful right here to not mess up your tail. But we're going to get this one in there. Oh, kind of, kind of tight. See that? Now I'm going to have some definite separation between that top dorsal fin and the, the tail. And don't worry if you've messed up some of your fibers here. We're going to have some cleanup for this thing no matter what. Okay, now when you get your body, as long as you want, let's go ahead and catch this off. Don't want to catch this this blue feather yet, so I'm going to do three or four or five good tight wraps right here. And now we want to, you know, get our, our wing, our top wing positioned. So I think that is going to be okay right there, but I'm going to have to strip some of these off the front. So let's just switch hands and then pull these out all the way to where our thread is hanging, I'd, I'd say. Now let's put a few tight wraps right here. Well, not tight yet. Make sure we're still on top. Okay, I think we are. Now I can lock it in with some really tight wraps. And I'm going to use plenty of extra wraps. I had one of these pull out on me earlier today, and then it just kind of yeah, ruined the whole fly. I mean, if this fly doesn't have that wing on the top, I don't think it's uh, going to be near as effective. Okay, so we're, our wing's still a little bit messy, I would say, but let's pull these this black, small black chenille up on either side, and that's going to be our lateral line. So, uh, yeah, my thread's hanging fine right there, so I'm going to just kind of pinch this, do a little pinch wrap right here, a couple of good wraps, and then let's check our position. Okay, I think that's going to be a little bit, yeah, that's going to be fine. Let's go ahead and lock this in and snip off this extra black chenille here. Now, let's wrap up a head. Just a big streamer head, and the one of them I saw in the book had a huge head and wide eyes painted on it. I'm not going to go so far as to paint eyes on it, but I will build a big head right here and put a nice drop of UV resin on it to get a nice shiny hard head. Okay, I'm going to say that's big enough. Let's whip finish this. Now for the cleanup phase. I think what you can do, you can trim a little bit of this. If you want to get a little bit more of a bullet shaped bait fish body, just trim some of that white chenille off the belly. And I've got some of this blue going all over the place. So let's try to trim this. And remember, we want some distinct separation between the top and then this back, which is going to be the tail. And what I've had to do on a couple of them, just cut these tail pieces out eh, one at a time. So this tail closest to me, I'm just going to snip the stem off and then do the same thing to the one on the far side of the hook. And there we go. That is our tail. That one's not perfect. You can use a little bit more trimming on it. But you know what? I think this fly will fish. Drop of head cement. Maybe I'll trim that tail just a little bit shorter. But you get the idea. Just trim it to your preference there. So drop a head cement and this guy's done. Pretty nifty little pattern. All right, now before I go, I haven't done a channel update. So um, it's mid-October and got the final numbers in for September. The channel did really well. We got about 52,000 views, uh, 
500 or so subscribers, and we made over $300, so the most we've made in a month yet. And I've been able to give away a few things. We did some tying toolkits and one vice, I think at least one book, but I got about 50 bucks left, so I'm gonna try something here. I'm going to offer up a, a Jay Stockard gift card for the $50 that we've got left. So anybody who's watching this this far, yeah, leave a comment and mention the word chicken. So this is kind of a like an Easter egg. If you're listening this far, hey, I really appreciate it. I love you for it. And I wanna reward somebody for, for their uh, loyalty. This is just awesome. So leave a comment, don't put a hashtag, just mention chicken. Say chicken in it, somehow work it into your comment. Just, I don't know, in a sentence. That's one crazy blue looking chicken or whatever. And in a couple days, I will go to the random comment picker and anybody that said chicken, I will randomly pick your comment and send you the Jay Stocker gift card. So just one way for me to say thanks to you loyal folks who watch all the videos and watch them all the way through. I really appreciate it. It certainly means a lot to me. So thanks everybody. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.